Yo, in today's video, we'll be looking at creepy and strange TikToks that are going to make you question reality. Oh my gosh. Oh. Hi. Where's the other camera? Right here in this decorative artifact. Wow, huh. that's great. Our cameras are motion activated, so they begin taping as soon as they sense any movement, and we can hide them in anything. We hide them in mirrors, lamps, televisions, you name it. So no matter where you go, we'll be watching you. <laughs> <laughs> you see that little creepy laugh they had at the end? Yo, that was literally a hidden message. It's hidden cameras everywhere. They're probably watching me in this room right now, even though the only camera recording is the one that's recording me right now. I'm sure there's some other cameras around here. Like they be having cameras and computer screens or TVs, specifically TV screens. I mean, yeah, they be watching y'all on y'all couch, watching y'all Netflix all the time. Hmm. So it's like a red moon. Is that what we seeing right here? Mm. It looks like it's on fire. Hmm. Anybody else ever seen the moon like this or this color at night? significant a total solar eclipse occurs somewhere on earth almost every year but in any given spot it may be only every 350 years or so according to nasa the great north american eclipse will stretch from mexico to canada and last anywhere from three and a half to four minutes when the corona comes out and it goes total it's like this eyeball looking at you from space because the sun, instead of being bright, is dark and it has this white halo around it. And it's like somebody's eye looking down at you. The eclipse is only visible to certain parts of the world. And every time it happens, its path changes. So a, a few minutes before totality, when the sun gets to be really, really skinny, uh, it, there's a diffraction pattern of sunlight that is on the ground, but it's this. So why are they calling it a disaster declaration, guys? You know, why are they telling us all these warnings and stuff just from an eclipse? Shouldn't it just pass, right? It's just some sunlight it should just pass. Why is there going to be emergency warnings out here? You know, talking about. You know, make sure you have food and communications and all of this other stuff. Like, what's really going to happen with this eclipse? And then they have, you know, I've never seen it before, but like in Walmart, they had the little uh, eclipse glasses that you can buy now. And, you know, it's making people want to go out there and see the eclipse. What if you look at the eclipse and it makes you crazy or something? Like she was saying, it's like a big eye looking down at you. What if that eye made you crazy? Kind of like on, um, what was it, uh, Lord of the Rings? You know, when uh, they would look into the eye and I would stare back. Yeah, it's probably something like that. It's a newspaper clipping from 1878. Mammoth cave eclipsed to the extent of a deposit of mummies. Several mm -hmm. mummified remains have been discovered in one of the large rooms. They were reposing in stone coffins. They present every appearance of the Egyptian Mm. Mummies. Let's keep going. By mere accident, the entrance to the wonderful cave was discovered. He realized about $400 from the sale of the mummies and was offered $10,000 for the cave. Mammoth Cave is found in Kentucky. Let me show you the stone coffins they're talking about in the newspaper clipping. Hey, I think Mammoth Cave is a way to get down to the uh, the hollow earth. For those of you who believe in the hollow earth theory, check out Mammoth Cave, man. That might be your way to get there. 
The path continued like this for a while, giving us lots of opportunities to take photos and just to take in the view. Eventually we made it to Giant's Coffin, which is about the halfway point of the tour. And it does look like a giant coffin made out of rock. A giant coffin made out of rock in Mammoth Cave, huh? <laughs> These people had everything, mm. bro. We know the truth now. Now. We definitely know the truth now. Shout out to that channel. 16 years on lockdown, 20 years on probation. I'm going to give it to you straight, not late. Are right, y'all agents? I mean, come on. I don't know who don't add up more. You and your fake woke teaching or your fake woke wife. Which one? Either one, either way. I don't think I know that it's safe to say this man right here, Jermaine Credit Fiend, was once upon a time Rashad Jamal. This is the deep deception of JJ. It's cool. Yup, I said JJ, Jermaine Jamal. And this is the man y'all let mislead y'all? Is that a BMW you sitting on? Is that a BMW's go-getters shirt that Jermaine Credit Fiend got on? And Credit Fiend, what's your whack-ass <laughs> slogan? We go setting and go get. <laughs> then you're gonna talk about this. I think it's time to let that hustle go and go legit. Fuck credit, I got a question. Is this fake woke wench your wife? Fake woke puppeteers creating a nation of fake woke puppets. Wake up! We coming! It's cool! Yo. There's a lot of lookalikes out here, y'all. But y'all think Rashad Jamal is JJ the credit fixer? <gasps> I don't know. So most people try to create a new personal reality as the same personality, and it doesn't work. We literally have to become someone else. In other words, thoughts are the language of the brain, and feelings are the language of the body. And how you think and how you feel creates a state of being. So most people have experiences in their life that brand them emotionally. They feel fear, they feel anger, they feel bitterness, they feel frustration, they feel insecurity. And those emotions then become part of their identity. So once they think certain thoughts that turn on certain circuits in their brain that are equal to their insecurity and then they feel insecure, the moment they feel insecure, they think more insecure thoughts, which makes more chemicals for them to feel insecure. And the repetition of that cycle over time conditions the body to subconsciously become the mind of insecurity. Mm. So then the person says, I am insecure. And whenever you say, I am anything, you're commanding your mind and body towards a destiny. So then most people's biology is, for the most part, their past. And so if you're not being defined by the vision of the future, some new possibility in your life, you're only left with the old circuitry in your brain and the old emotions of the past. Mm -hmm. Technology. Yo, for real, these words are truly spells. Watch out for that I am word. You know, you got to be careful with these things and, you know, how you talk to yourself for real. But yeah, man, we got to get out of these old ways, you know, new thoughts. You got to think about yourself being better in the future for you to actually be better in the future. If you get stuck in these thoughts of, oh, man, my life ain't going nowhere. Oh, man, I don't know what I'm going to do next, man. You just down and out on yourself. You're really not going to know what to do next because you keep telling yourself, I don't know what to do. No, figure out what it is, know what to do, and then go do it and see how your life changes is the reason why they're able to control you y'all are being attacked through your phones your ipads your tv screens okay and i know they don't want me to get this fucking message i had to record this video four times y'all need to wake up and realize that humans are being replaced by artificial intelligence okay they are creating robots they are creating scientific shit in laboratories to replace humans because it's getting to the point where human deficiency is at, is at an all-time high they are making you conditioned to normalize the fact that you need to be codependent on technology because guess what the more codependent on technology you are the more control they have over you the more they're able to control your brain the more they're able to control what you do monetize where you go you got to understand y'all technology is taking over the world and when i say technology is taking over the world this is not a good thing this is not a positive thing it's making you lazy it's making you not able to do things for yourself you're not you're no longer able to actually go out and do things on your own you rely on a gps you rely on your phone you rely on google yo <clears throat> That whole Google thing, though, GP, Google, people rely on Google for everything. Just Google it. Google me, bro. Man, look on Google Maps for me. It's crazy. Like, back in the day, 
if you told a person, hey, we're going over such and such house today for a barbecue or for anything, right? You go, oh, yeah, send me the address. And you would just figure out where it's at. You know, oh, I know where that's at. That's over here by such and such street. I'm like, okay, I know I can kind of get there. But nowadays, man, if a mob ain't got their GPS, they ain't driving nowhere. Park the car. Hold on, why my GPS ain't working? I don't even know how to get somewhere in my own town. Yeah, man, we are very, very dependent on technology. And, you know, it's getting kind of scary, in all honesty. You know, we're, we're moving to some cyberpunk type era. Yeah, I think we kind of already knew that. I know y'all hate her, but hey, check out what Candace Owen said on the Breakfast Club, bro, because a lot of black people really need to hear this. Not gonna lie, Candace Owen's been on the up and up lately. She's showing up in a lot of videos, you know, so that must mean something good for her, or I don't know, could be something bad for her as well. Let's find out. A lot to do with illiteracy, which is something that I talk about all the time, because the illiteracy rate in inner cities right now is over 70%. We're talking about over 70% of black mm. boys that can't pass a basic reading exam. That is mm. crazy. That is crazy. Across the United States entirely, 40%. We're at 40%. Yeah. So people think that they're going to pu public schools to get an education. It's the exact opposite. They are slowly making sure that you're never going to be able to have a proper education. And they're going to tell you what to think. That's what mm -hmm. they want. They want the ability of a headline. And that's very scary. You know, I talk about what they did on slave plantations. You know, why we weren't allowed to learn how to read. Because they, they knew that if they could control the narrative then you could be enslaved forever, right? Your your mm. mind becomes enslaved when you can't read, when you say, okay, I learned that in a textbook, but let me read this, you know, and actually see what I think. And I think that's intentional. I literally believe that there is an evil intent to re-enslave black Americans. And the ability for us not to read to me is, everybody should be hitting the alarm on that. Like, why aren't black boys learning how to read and yet being encouraged to make music, to follow hip hop, to do this, to do that, you know, follow sports. You know, our culture is very much like go into music or go into sports. Mm -hmm. We need black scholars. We need black people that are actually aware of what has actually happened to black America, what the true story is outside of what these textbooks are trying to sell. I agree. It's, it, and that, it's very scary to me, the, the illiteracy rate in black America. You know, I agree with that because a lot of times when, you know, black people see other black people that are successful, they're in music and athletics. So mm -hmm. that's people gravitate towards right which guarantees them that's why they turn these people into such idols it guarantees more black failure right because here's the here's the truth so. what are, what is the actual percentage chance that you have of becoming the next lebron james zero percent yeah. let me just tell you zero percent that you're yeah. going to be the next but every black kid because of the way he's hailed as a hero and they put this is going to try to be the next lebron james they're going to mm -hmm. think that they have it right so they're going to put their academics a second and prioritize you know mm -hmm. my baby's going to be the next lebron okay but he probably isn't going to be what is your chance as a black American of becoming a doctor if you stay in school and pass all the tests? 100%. Right? Many black doctors, too. Mm. Listen, man, she ain't lying, y'all. I also think there is some cruel, evil intent out here, you know, with making people, but specifically black people, not be able to read. It is a little messed up, you know what I'm saying? Like, as far as sports and entertainment goes and how they want to idolize that, I was talking to somebody recently, right? Somebody in my town, uh, they were coaching track, you know, we're talking about that. And he was just saying, yeah, man, I just want to try my best and do everything I can to get these kids into college. And I was just thinking, like, sports really ain't the way. I mean, it can be, but you don't see these other cultures like, yo, my kid has to play sports to get into school. No, they're like, my kid has to pass these exams so that he can get into school because there's scholarships for academics as well not just for sports and you guys got to remember that but that's what we're trapped into thinking we think the only way to be successful into this world is either to be an artist a musician or i'm not not an artist because not just regular art but a musician and specifically i mean a musician in specific and a athlete you know whether that's basketball football mainly basketball in all honesty and like she said you have no percent on being a, the next lebron james like it's not gonna happen you have a better chance honestly at being a youtuber you know i would push for that more than you know pushing to be uh 
an athlete because at least with that you can learn some type of technical aspects into you know computing and you know some type of skill and editing and film work you know you're learning something when you're doing a little bit of YouTube so I would push for that for the kids more than anything so apparently the devil <laughs> out here handing out blessings right I knew the day that that girl died bro mm -hmm. I knew what time it was already y'all gotta understand mm -hmm. See, the devil was out here giving out blessings too okay and he over here smiling dancing really rocking on the motherfucking stage oh it's a game See, you Hold on. The DC Young Fly, right? When the thing happened with his girlfriend, right? The man started getting all these accolades. He got a TV show. You know what I'm saying? He's just doing it big now. Mmm. What happened? Why he get all of this stuff? You can't fool God. I don't care how hard you try to pretend and use God's name. See, a lot of motherfuckers is out here using God's name in vain. I, I think you need to be tread light, baby. Y'all on dangerous territory. Because if any of y'all motherfuckers really believe that this man got those blessings from God, baby, I need y'all to reevaluate what y'all seeing. I need y'all to open y'all third eye. I need y'all to open y'all spiritual eyes. And I need y'all to realize that girl was sacrificed for his success, for his mm -hmm. fame and status, and for him to go to the next level. It's all rituals, all apart. That girl was innocent, and they used that girl as a sacrifice. This is a time when you're going to start walking into your soul's purpose. This is a time when you're going to realize that the Most High got to use you as that vessel that, 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 that needs to be shown to the world, family. See, I'm speaking to somebody that overcame a lot of obstacles, man. I'm speaking to somebody that has a lot of divine wisdom. That's you, family. That's you. So I need you to understand that there's going to be a lot of, a lot of tough trials and tribulations mm -hmm. at this time, family, because you are making room for the new you. You are making room for your new life. And it's very important for you to trust, trust what's going on right now. Trust the process, man. Trust the process. If somebody left your life, it's not meant. If, if somebody don't want to see your value, then guess what? That's their loss, family. Understand that, overstand that. Because whatever you put your mind to, you can create. Whatever you put your mind to, you can achieve, family. Let me repeat that. Whatever you put your mind to, you can create. Whatever you put your mind to, you can achieve, family. Understand that, overstand that. 1963, mm -hmm. and we were instrumental in, we helped invent the ventilator. We invented how to take blood pressure on premature babies. We, we were the ones that invented nutrition in the vein. Uh, we identified the need for magnesium, the need for zinc, the need for copper. Wow. And, and uh, we did it with metabolic beds. We did every, every intake and output and did these things. So we were a leader in the field of neonatology. The hospital still is a leader in the field of neonatology. But then I had a baby, Joseph, in 1975, who had flat brain waves and was said to be brain dead. And uh, uh, it was suggested to stop treating him. I said, well, I don't do that. I treat babies, some live, some die, and kept treating him. And uh, he did eventually get off the ventilator, and he went to school, and he got straight A's, and ran tramp and played baseball. Mm. He's married, he has three children. So... That's that's crazy, y'all. And it was about to throw this baby life away just like that. Shout out to him for to keep working on him. I don't know where this video is going. They're talking about harvesting some stuff. Hey, but he saved somebody's life right there and they was able to create some more lives. So that's a blessing. Because of him, after about six months when he continued to live and was doing much better than anybody would have predicted, I started to investigate brain death and uh, um, it, it took about two years till I understood the language of brain death. Uh, uh, brain death is, is a lie. Uh, it, it's mm -hmm. a, a, a lie that's been told over and over again so people don't even realize it's a lie anymore. But it's been a lie from the beginning continues to be a lie. So um, uh, I published in in the medical literature, I have an article in the uh, in Journal of the American Medical Association. I have an uh, article in the Gonzaga Law Review. It's 85 pages. It has 244 footnotes to it. And, and uh, uh, 
because of that, eventually I have uh, continued to um, uh, talk about brain death. Brain death is a lie. I have talked all, all over the United States. I've, um, I've talked in many countries. The, the truth is easy, and, and then once you deviate from the truth, then you ha have First it's this false, but then when people become conscious of it's false, then it's a lie. Brain death is a, a, is a lie. The way it occurred was that Christian Bernard did the first heart transplant in South Africa in 1967. Mm -hmm. Three days later, they did the second heart transplant. And you don't know where that is, but I'll tell you. It was done in Brooklyn, New York. And what, what they did is they cut the beating heart out of a three-day-old baby and transplanted it into an 18-day-old baby. And at the end of their surgeries, a short time after the end of their surgeries, both of those babies were dead. It was illegal, it was immoral. And so they had to do something to make it legal. And so what they did is they set up a committee at Harvard and the committee invented brain death. Uh, the committee did not do studies on dogs or cats or rats. They didn't collect data on human beings. They just invented brain death. And Yo. That's messed up, though. And I 100% agree with the man. Because, like, how can you just rule a person dead if they literally are alive still? You know? And then they'll cut the plug on them and there they go. You know? And... So what is this? Transplants, they have a designated requester. And a designated requester is usually a very nice person who dresses nice and, and befriends the relatives. Can I get you a cup of coffee? Oh, I know this has to be terrible on you. We'll do everything we can to help you. And all of that is part of getting them indoctrinated to get their, yeah, to get their organs. And, mm. Mm. See, and you cannot get any, you cannot get any organs from a cadaver. Every organ that's transplanted is a healthy organ, and you can only get healthy organs from living persons. You cannot get any organs for transplant from a cadaver. Mm. So you don't put it on your license. And the things I'm telling you is that you you are not allowed to hear, uh, it, um, and because if you hear it, you will be upset as you, all three of you are upset, and rightly so, you should be upset, because uh, um, whose organs do they want? They want the organs from the, uh, for, certainly from all children, but especially the people who are 16 to 30, and their life is in jeopardy. If they're unconscious and on a ventilator, they're gonna get their organs, and they do everything to get their organs. And, and uh, once the organs are taken, you can't bring them back to life. And so that what they do is they tell the relatives, well, you, you know, your, your, your daughter Sally would really like to do something good. And this is a way to make something good out of this tragedy and, and, uh, or your son. And the, while they have been getting organs from accidents and gunshot wounds, they now get more organs from overdose of drugs than they do from accidents and gunshot mm. wounds combined. Yo, makes sense why we got such a bad, like, fentanyl thing, or uh, what is it, an opioid crisis? You know, all these people ODing? That's why. They could just say, hey, he OD'd, sorry. But they got him on a ventilator in a hospital, and they about to get some organs. There are eight deaths a day from overdose in Ohio, and and they they get their organs is, is what they want, and and so what are they doing? They're giving the policemen the Narcan to counteract the drug, which gets them into the emergency room, but it doesn't save their life. It gets them in the emergency room, and they still get their organs. And so... It's so diabolically disgusting. Oh, it really is. See, it's so bad. It makes sense. It's making sense. Oh, my gosh. It's making sense. Yeah. Now, use the part of, part of why... I... Um, 
uh, when you were on talking about unconscious and pain, and you might have talked about something else, what I'm encouraging you to do is to realize that that th there are common denominators of all of this. The common denominator is that each person is unique and unrepeatable and special. And a person is is alive, uh, uh, but uh, so are the dogs and cats running around that are alive, and so are the trees alive, but they don't have the life that the person has. And each person has that life, whether that person can walk or talk or show consciousness. In brain death, they, they do only three things for brain death. One is the, the patient does not show consciousness. The patient does not have brainstem reflexes that, that involve the eye or the ear. So there's about 14 brainstem reflexes, but they test only six. They don't test the others. And then the, the test that they do that uh, is called the apnea test, it's really not a test, it's a procedure. And what they do is take the ventilator away uh, for 10 minutes and the patient has to demonstrate that they can take a breath in that 10 minutes or that becomes the signal to cut out their organs. During the time they're off the ventilator, the carbon dioxide builds up, the acids build up, that makes the brain swell worse and makes them get worse. So everybody must learn to not do an apnea test. You all must learn it now. And, and you have to know it. I hope you never have to use it on your relatives, but you need to learn it. Do not do an apnea test. No one should ever have the procedure of an apnea test. And then uh, you, you ha have to know that the overdose of drugs, they need time to heal. You know, right now, and I got a text as I was coming in from the father of a girl in Canada, Takesha, uh, McKitty, you, you can Google her if you want, Takesha McKitty. Uh, uh, um, I, was, I, gave, I was talking in New York and I was going to New Jersey the next day and they called me and asked me if I would um, um, help with Takesha, so I went to Canada to help her. Uh, uh, she overdosed on September the 14th. On September the 20th, they issued a death certificate on her. Uh, she's still very much alive. She moves her feet. She moves her legs. Uh, you know, and, I mean, I could. But she has a death certificate. She has a death certificate. She has a death certificate on September the twentieth, and wow. the, this is uh, uh, December the fifth. You know, and she's right. still alive. She's still alive. Yes, but With they. With a death certificate. But she could have had her organs cut out on September the twentieth, but by going sure. there, put a stop to that. So she was not dissected. Every. Everybody who um, who has their organs taken, they are all dissected alive. There's no organs you can get from a cadaver. Yo, not gonna lie, that was deep, y'all. That was deep, and I hit home, man. I had a family member that that happened to. Got into a car accident. He was only 25. Be safe out here, y'all. Be safe. Hey, bro, say yourself before it's too late, man. Say yourself, man. Say your fucking self, bro. Because these motherfuckers is lying to your ass about everything, bro. They lying to your ass about everything, bro. It's five layers of the hemisphere in the brain. I mean, it's five layers of the hemisphere in the sky, my nigga. They can mm. Even that right there. Go look up the movie Tomorrowland, right? And then Tomorrowland, they take off into the sky, right? In a, in a rocket ship. You think they go into space, but no, the rocket ship turns back around and comes back down to Earth. And as they're coming back down, they go through a different layer each time. Kind of similar to what he's talking about right now. Controlling partial of that shit, nigga. That's how they controlling the motherfucking weather, making it rain and shit like that, bro. They can, they lying to your ass. They lie to your ass about the history, my nigga. They ain't lie to you. Bro, nigga, we ain't come from no motherfucking Africa, dog. We been here. Firstly, first off, my nigga, we can take this shit politically and economically, my nigga. They lying about the identity, my nigga. They falsely identifying us as black Americans, my nigga. We not no fucking black Americans, well as we not no motherfucking African American, nigga. Ain't no fuck, and nigga, even the motherfucking natives, nigga. 
Motherfucker, you with, bro, nigga, we every fucking thing, nigga. Like, these motherfuckers is lying to your ass. Falsely identifying your ass so they can flick to all these laws. And, nigga, that's how they psychically attacking you, motherfuckers. And then they making you motherfuckers seem crazy. And then the chosen ones of this motherfucking realm of this planet my nigga is sleep so the motherfucking world is spiraling in motherfucking chaos dog so they're trying to keep all the motherfucking chosen ones asleep my dog that's the whole purpose of all these bullshit ass illusions dog the light cold lockdown is you i'm telling you they using cgi to control this motherfucking weather it's a firmament over the fucking globe my nigga nobody ever been to fucking space my nigga everything is spiritual in this world my nigga and then first off the woman, female, black goddess, my nigga, she is God. Everything about a female is spiritual. Look at her, my nigga. The belly of her stomach look like a nine. What is the number nine? The number of completion in the universe. Three, six, and nine. Understand the power of three, six, and nine. I understand you, my hands, you feel me? Don't worry about that. Just listen to the message, my nigga. But whole time... Motherfuckers need you, you need to wake up, heal that shit. You feel me? You sit here to heal generational curses, dog. I'm talking to you. You special, you chosen. Heal that shit, my nigga. Don't be sitting around waiting for the next motherfucker. These celebrities is being controlled, they puppets. Ain't no need for you praising these motherfuckers. A, mm -hmm. a god, the definition of a god is the god being creation. Nigga, everything is God. It's creation. Do y'all need to reprogram y'all mind and give y'all mind, give you give meanings to different shit. Learn the actual meaning of a fucking god it's the creation of everything god is source god is all that is not no fucking religion jesus was a entity that was created to mind fuck you motherfuckers to keep you motherfuckers disconnected from your pineal gland understand that bro that's what everybody have been trying to tell y'all bro y'all need to wake the fuck up and realize ain't nobody finna save y'all besides y'all selves y'all need to heal that shit you feel me breathe <sighs> Spirit, I'm speaking from a state of spirit, my nigga. Breath is God, my nigga. That's spirit. <sighs> Breathe, my nigga. Understand that. Elders may not interfere. Hey, for real, man. We gods out here. And to be gods, we gotta treat ourselves like gods. You know what I'm saying? Like, imagine being a god and then telling yourself, man, I ain't shit when you look in the mirror. Man, I suck at this, man. Imagine being a god and you telling yourself these things. Come on, now. You gotta respect yourself better or with any choice a species makes for itself unless there is adequate cause to believe they are being manipulated by another species slash force. Elders are allowed the right to execute any perpetrator of any major law. However, if the perpetrator complies with the rest and or is brought down peacefully, the elders is expected them to bring them in alive. It is illegal to interfere with conflicts between civilizations native to the same world. Elders have the right to call parley between warring species. Any race that resists their command is treated as an invader. No civilization may war with another and or attempt to invade another unless a declaration of war is made by the ruling government of the other civilization. Murder is prohibited, murder being understood as any sentient being killing another unlawfully. Each civilization may deal with such individuals on their own, unless it is between two or more species. In that case, the elder is within rights to escort the suspect to the universal courts. If they do not comply, the suspect can be terminated on site, which means they get sent to limbo. Where are the elders at? We need them here because we got some people invading us here. After you've awakened, one of the first things you'll begin to notice is the vast amount of extraterrestrials that live on the planet, some coming from all different parts in the galaxies and even different universes. There's extraterrestrials, interterrestrials, terrestrials, and etc. We're going to be focusing on extraterrestrials, beings that don't originate from Earth. There's thousands and the most common aliens people heard about are reptilians and the greys. I will name a few more that are on this planet that are very common, humans, Pleiadians, Anunnaki, the Nomos, vampires, werewolves, the Chikahians, the Duwani, Archangels, Guardian Angels, the Scardians, Lemurians, Light Elves and so many more. Some of these extraterrestrials walk amongst you, some of them live in the ocean and some of them live on different realms. For example, the Guardian Angel are a race of beings from the astral realms. Their job is to help souls get back to the highest version of themselves through numbers. The Guardians are a group of gods that live on the highest realm on this planet. Their job is to protect Earth. The Chikahians, also known as Bigfoot. They live in the... F Yo, it's a lot of different species out here. Bulwark is basically... 
you doing homework at home when you really supposed to do stuff at school. Right, right. Ain't school no place to learn. Mm -hmm. Mm hmm. Home is to come from school, chill, get on your tablet, get on game, what you want to do. That's right. But the teachers want to take like 30 minutes of your time, an hour of your time, just to give you homework. <laughs> they do this to bother you. I don't know why they do that, but that's teachers. <laughs> all our kids, all our kids, put your hands up. Hope for everybody see this video. No more homework. No more homework. <laughs> now we out. Let me just say this. As an ex-student and a current parent, I couldn't agree with little bruh more. Because I be tired of my kids coming home with all this homework with shit I don't remember. Nah, not gonna lie. I disagree with this one. It's, or maybe it's just my school district or my school zone or whatever for my kids, but they have no homework and I hate it. All right? They come home with their little Chromebook that got donated to them from Comcast. Right? I'll be like, hey, you got any homework? No. No homework. What do you mean you ain't got no homework? You ain't even got a piece of paper to practice nothing on? You ain't got no books to read? Nothing? You ain't got to study chapter three? So you can know what's going on in math class tomorrow? Nah. They don't learn anything. It's kind of like what Candace Owens was saying at the beginning of the video. They're not teaching our, our kids anything. They're not setting them up for success at all. Like, at all. And then you go to school. I ask you what you guys do at school. They're like, nothing. Didn't learn anything. Kids were bad. My teacher quit. My other teacher quit. Like, the school system here? Trash. And anybody from the school system, if you're watching my videos, trash. And it's not my fault that I don't remember, but we're going to get into that. In this video is not to address every single issue happening within the school system. I genuinely just want to call out some things that I noticed about the school system and the origins of it. The issue with the educational system is the fact that it was never designed to actually educate. It was designed to do something a little bit different. Think about the quote from John D. Rockefeller who is one of the founders of the actual school system, along with, I think it was Horace Mann. But his quote goes something like this. I don't want a nation of thinkers. Mm -hmm. I want a nation of workers. What the? Like, take that in for real. And think about what he means by that. Like, what did he mean by that? You want to be the only CEO is what I'm gathering. See, the difference between education and schooling is the fact that education is about exploring and learning how to think. That is what education is. Schooling, on the other hand, is training and teaching, much like what we see today in schools. So think about it in this sense. In school, when you're being taught, you're basically being told like, okay, in science, these scientists already investigated this. They've looked this up and they said, this is how it works. So you don't need to look any further because this is what it is. Think about that, though. Crazy, Schooling right? is the reason why I have so many people in my comments trying to argue me down about what Google said or what this book said or what this scientist said, even though this shit don't make no sense. Like, logic is logic, y'all. I don't care what who said. Like, w at some point, we have to start realizing that books are tools for reference. That's it. It's not the end all be all. So stop trying to talk about what so-and-so, that is somebody else's perspective. And that is the difference between education and schooling. Education, you're going to go out and explore and find the answer yourself. You're not going to let somebody tell you what it is. I have to wrap this up because I don't want this video to be too long. But before I go, I'm going to show y'all a clip that really let me know. Yeah, they never really cared about us because they want to show us the hard way to do everything. We should not have to live a hard life in any kind of way. OK, when it comes to education, when it comes to food that is provided to us naturally by the planet, when it comes to so much shit, we have it so hard when it's not necessary for real. So look at this clip real quick. Man, let me show y'all something. See, they don't teach us this in school. They don't. They all teach us the regular way that everybody else know. You know, they teach us the one right here, go here, go here, carry all this and do all that. Extra mm -mm. shit. Don't show you how they do it with the kids cross country. They teach them the simple way, so simple. Break it down what that is. That's five. Break it down what that is. Time that. That's six. Put it right here. Put that right there. Break it down right here what that is. Zero. 
You do the five times the debt is 10, and three times one is three. You add that together, that's 13. You bring that right there, boom, you got your answer that fast. They don't teach us that. Why? But again, now that we know they want workers instead of thinkers, this makes sense. I could go so much further, so I might need to do a part two. But before I head out, let me just tell y'all this. Did you know that the same architects that built the prisons built the schools? Think about it. Oh, and the hospitals too. Think about it though. Think about the cafeteria, the gymnasium, all those big areas that they have in those buildings. Exactly the same. The same exact setup. Let's be for real, for real though. They're all prisons. Prisons for the physical body as well as prisons for the mind. But let me know y'all thoughts. Peace, love, and light, and gratitude for watching. So, Eli so my problem is this, right? If we don't send our kids to school, right? If, I mean, granted that the educational system kind of sucks, but there are some good teachers out there. If the parents aren't going to teach the children, which nine out of ten times they're not, then what is left for these kids? Hmm, what's, how are they going to learn? Who's going to teach them? You know, if they can't trust, if they can't trust the teachers, if they can't trust the parents, who is going to teach them? You know, and that's a question. That's a serious question that we got to answer. You know, because we can say, "Oh, school systems suck. My kids ain't learning nothing." But are you teaching them anything as their parent? Because if not, then you really have no room to complain. Elon Musk made a post on X, and it said, "Orange is the new lemon." No, no, y'all probably like, what does that mean? It's a code that I'm finna show y'all. So now if you type in orange through new limit inside of a Dimachi or calculator, you would get this. And you see now orange through new limit, it equals to this number right here. 1,485. Keep that number in mind. And now if you look up what them numbers mean in Dimachia, it means the second coming of Christ. You see right there, 1,485. Now when you see him posting stuff like this, do it not make your head itch? Mr. E, my boy, what you know that we don't know. Hmm. And then we also got to take in the fact of all the biblical events that's been taking place. Even had recent dreams personally saying the same thing. All I'm saying, gang, is watch the signs. They in your face. But y'all let me know in the comments mm. what y'all think about this message Elon Musk gave us about orange is the new lemons. Y'all want to know in the comments. Like a follow for more wisdom and stay tuned. Y'all better get right with the most high. By the way, this video is for entertainment purposes only. Apple is the new lime. This is exactly what I'm talking about when they love to put the truth in plain sight. Check out this commercial. What are they trying to tell y'all? Mm. Crazy. Huh. I think we went too high. Right in your face. That's the dome. It's honestly how crazy how they throw this dome everywhere and people will still deny it. But y'all don't forget to like, follow me, and share this. Let's get this out to the people. And like always, God bless. <laughs> yeah, that commercial is wild. They just painting the dome. Dome just. I went too deep. Planet. I went too deep. Have you heard of the prison planet theory? Well, guess who just learned about it? Yeah. I didn't sleep last night. Hey, speaking of the prison planet theory, they threw this in Dragon Ball Heroes, guys. I don't know if y'all watch any Dragon Ball Z, but in Dragon Ball Z, they threw this idea out there. There's a lot of ideas in Dragon Ball Z that are just, hey, if you got an eye to see it, you'll see it. I did not sleep last night, and if you keep watching this, you're probably not going to sleep either. So here I am, minding my own business on Reddit when I found Escaping Prison Planet. And for the next three hours, I dove 
too deep. Here's the gist of it. Essentially, we're all trapped here on Earth. We're all trapped here. And everything we know about, you know, like all the religions that believe in reincarnation, all these different things. Yeah, we keep coming back to this Earth because there are astral beings that are harvesting our energy and they are trapping us here. Sounds crazy, right? Sounds crazy. Well, let's get into the details. Apparently, these beings that are controlling us are these reptilian beings that you always hear about. Well, let's dive into it, you know. In Jainism and Hinduism, they have Nagas, half human, half serpent. The Aztec Empire talked about a serpent-like god that they called Quetzalcoatl. And don't tell me if I pronounced it right or wrong. I don't care, okay? Surely, two instances, right? This is just a coincidence. African shamans talk about the Shitari, and it is a race of reptilian beings. Hopi Indians in North America had the Shaiti, which translates to snake brothers. Chinese, Japanese, and Korean legends all talk about the Kappa. And Gnostic tests, which if you don't know about the Gnostics, Gnosis just means knowledge. And basically what the Gnostics believed was after Christ died, you have to have particular knowledge that would save you. Well, the Gnostics, yeah, they believe in archons, which are parasitic entities that feed off of us. We're doing okay? Mm. We doing okay? So the question is why? So... Do y'all think that we live on a prison planet? I mean, it's possible because can't nobody leave this mug. You know, we see the rockets trying to shoot up and the rockets hit the dome. You know, what do we have a dome here for? You know, who are the gods who created the firmament? Because if you look at the Hebrew word, it doesn't say God. It says Elohim, which is plural. So there were gods. Are these gods the reptilians who are trapping us here on this prison planet, capturing our energy? I don't know, man. Doesn't sound too far fetched. I can see it being true. But yeah, guys, these are some of the most creepy and strange TikToks that are out there. If you like the content, don't forget to subscribe, turn your notification bell on, and until next time, YouTube, peace.